Hello and welcome to Let's Talk About Myths, baby. My name is Liv and I'm here to talk to you all about the batshit crazy mythology of the ancient Greeks. Today's episode is a mini myth where I just give you a quick little rundown on a one of the many fun short little myths of ancient Greece. Daphne, the nymph who said, hell no, Apollo. So, guys, for once, I have a story about a nymph who turned down a god, and that god was not Zeus. It's pretty momentous, I think. It was, of course, though, Zeus's son. So... Anyway, Apollo is the god of music and the sun and also the plague, for some reason I don't totally understand. He was one of the most powerful gods of Greek mythology because he was one of the Olympians. Now, I haven't actually had much of a chance to cover gods that weren't the Olympians yet, but trust me, there are lots and they were less powerful than the Olympians. One day, Apollo was feeling a little, shall we say, impish? And he decided to get a little snippy with the god Eros, who's the god of love. He's the son of Aphrodite and Cupid is what the Romans called him which you might know a little more. But to clarify, this Eros slash Cupid was an adult man. Apollo wasn't making fun of a baby or anything weird like that. So Apollo mocks Eros for using a bow and arrow, which I don't totally understand because bows and arrows are pretty cool. I mean, you wouldn't mock Legolas or Katniss. I don't think so. So Apollo mocks Eros saying, according to Wikipedia, what are you doing with powerful weapons, naughty boy? Which is a pretty weird thing to say, I have to admit. It also sounds like he's conceding that the weapons are powerful, so frankly I don't totally understand where the insult came in, but there you have it. Eros felt insulted. Apollo continued by rambling on about something or other, but whoever put it into Wikipedia used like a really weird translation or something, because frankly it doesn't make much sense, so I won't repeat it. The point is, Eros was not happy. He felt he was being insulted. Now, if the gods are good for anything, it's creative vengeance. And this is an awesome example of that. Eros, angry about being insulted by Apollo, whips out two of his fancy magic arrows. He takes one of the arrows, a gold one, and he shoots Apollo. This makes Apollo fall truly madly deeply in love with a nymph named Daphne who was, just by coincidence, nearby. He is quite suddenly obsessed. Like, creepy obsessed. This nymph, who was, frankly, at the wrong place at the wrong time, is subsequently hit by the other arrow, which was made of lead. This, on top of probably giving her a nasty case of lead poisoning, also made her loathe Apollo. It's like an opposite arrow, I guess. And loathe him, like, not only does she find his sudden obsession with her fairly creepy and a psycho stalker waiting to happen, but she also just magically finds him utterly repulsive. And Apollo was a pretty hot god, so it's a powerful leaden arrow. Now Daphne, even before being hit by the lead arrow, was unlikely to appreciate Apollo's attention. She was a devotee of Apollo's twin sister, Artemis, who was a very proud and very stringent virgin. Daphne was, too, a virgin. She'd apparently rejected many a man and instead enjoyed woodland sports and hiking in the forest. I'm not sure what woodland sports are, but they sound very nymphesque. As an emulator of Artemis, Daphne was hell-bent on staying away from men and remaining a virgin. Given the way women were treated in ancient Greece, and particularly Greek mythology, I don't blame her. I mean, you do you, girl. There was a time when Daphne's father was pressuring her to marry so that he could have grandchildren. She was basically just like, fuck you, dad. That's not the life I want. She made such a great argument that he relented, which I think is pretty impressive for an ancient Greek man. Well done, Daphne's dad. So that's all to say that this very awesome and independent woman had to deal with an Olympian god who was obsessed with fucking her, and now she had to figure out how to get away. 
as we learned with Zeus's many troubling tales, it's often near impossible to say no to a god when they've decided they want you. So that's fun. As if it's not hard enough with regular humans. So Apollo starts following her nonstop, just begging her to stay with him and just be with him. And she's continually ignoring him. She just keeps going about her business. I like to believe that in 2017, she'd be one of the many women out there wearing headphones with no music playing and holding her keys in her hands. Apparently, they were pretty evenly matched for quite a while, too. Daphne, being a badass, managed to keep away from Apollo until, that's right, another man gets involved. For reasons beyond understanding, Eros now decides he wants to help Apollo catch Daphne, as if This wasn't entirely his fault in the first place. If you hear a weird sound in the background, that's my cat's incredibly loud purring. He will not leave me alone. You're welcome. So now, because of stupid Eros, who suddenly wants to help Apollo be creepy, Apollo gains on Daphne, and she knows he's going to catch her. Now, if you ignore the whole mythology, like, this is outside of reality, you know, this is off in a whole other world, and all those aspects of this, it's really scary. Like, this is a woman who has repeatedly rejected a man, and he won't take no for an answer, and he's chasing her and about to catch her. That's just the creepiest thing ever. And of course, there is only one way out for women in ancient mythology who didn't want a particular god who'd set his sights on her. Daphne had to call out for her father. You know, the one who'd been a good enough person to at least let her stay single. Her father, though, was also a god of rivers, because she's a nymph and that's how that works. So she calls out her father, this river god, and she actually asks him to open up the earth and swallow her whole, because that is how badly she doesn't want Apollo to catch her. It's really quite depressing, to be honest. But he doesn't open up the earth. He's a bit more creative than that. Suddenly, a heavy numbness seizes Daphne, and she stops in her place. Slowly, her body becomes covered in a thin bark, and her hair begins to turn to leaves. Her arms transform into branches, and her legs fuse together while her feet sprout out into roots. Her fingertips become twigs, reaching off her branch arms, leaves dangling at the ends, and the next thing she knows, she's a laurel tree. Apollo is still in love with this woman who wanted absolutely nothing to do with him and who he forced into transforming herself into a tree. I mean, he could have just fucked off, but he refused. And now he uses his fancy powers of eternal youth and immortality, and he makes it so that tree Daphne will remain evergreen. And for this reason, the leaves of the bay laurel tree don't decay, which I didn't actually know, so thanks, mythology. Paul also takes to wearing laurel around his head like a crown, and that becomes his thing, the way you can easily identify Apollo. But frankly, what an awful way to acquire your token identifier, by scaring a woman into transforming herself into a tree. You're a good dude, Apollo. Now, this story comes with a strong, strong recommendation. There's a piece of art by Gian Lorenzo Bernini, and it is one of the most incredible sculptures ever created. Like, ever. I dare you to propose something more beautiful. I'm going to post a picture of it on the Instagram, but you should Google it too, because just my god. It's the most incredible when you've actually seen it in person because walking around it is like witnessing magic, I swear. It depicts Apollo just as he's caught up to Daphne and she's in the midst of transforming into this tree. So from the front, it looks like Apollo is grasping onto her almost affectionately, though her face looks a lot more like the shocked emoji. But from the back, he's got his arms around a tree. Like you can't tell that it's not a tree all the way around. Honestly, it's bonkers. It still gives me chills, and I saw it like in like 2009. Seriously, go to Rome, 
go to the Galleria Borghese and just check it out. My heart just aches thinking about it. I feel I should add a little clarification point at this stage. I love Greek mythology. I feel like all I do now is bitch about the way that men... I feel like all I do now is point out how awful the men were, and you know, they were, let's be perfectly honest. But just to make perfectly clear, like, I love this. It is wonderful. The I, like, the stuff they came up with, it's so incredible. Like, that's how a laurel tree exists. Like, I, I don't get it, but it's amazing. Thank you for listening to this mini myth. As usual, you can find me on Twitter at at MythsBaby. You can find me on Instagram at at MythsBaby. I now have a new website, MythsBaby.com. You can see the way I'm going with this. There's Facebook, MythsBaby. Everything is MythsBaby. The podcast is available on iTunes and Google Play and Stitcher and SoundCloud. And you should probably listen on iTunes or Stitcher just saying, please rate and review It would make me incredibly happy to hear from people who are listening to this. Drop me a line if you're listening and you liked it. Tweet at me, whatever. I'm just, uh, would be really happy to hear from anyone who's enjoying this podcast or has any suggestions, tips, tricks, anything, any suggested myth you want to hear, just shout it out. Thank you again. My name is Liv. I love this shit.